Hello there, and welcome back to the Exit Signal Zinger Show, episode number 315. That's 315, I think so, or maybe 316, I'm not too sure, but hopefully it's 315. How are you doing? How are you feeling? Great, amazing, good to hear. Um, It is now sometime in the evening, Monday. I hope you guys are feeling well, you guys are feeling good. I am, what, just recovering after a three mile run. I'm in now week two of my How Higden 10K program that i'm doing throughout the lockdown i've done the 5k program now i'm doing the 10k i'm just going to go up and continue. no actually i'm going to switch over and do this once i finish the how higden i'll switch over and do this one the crossfit endurance the unbreakable runner kind of program but i want to try and do the standard sort of like how higden program where you basically do loads of mileage during the week i think it tops out to about 14 to 22 miles per week with some sprint you know stuff in between and then the idea is that you know you're going to reach you're going to have the anaerobic uh, base that you need in order to kind of do a good 5k run by the time the race day comes up obviously loads of stuff like the Hackney Half Marathon um, and the, the park that you call it the the parks 10k I forgot what the name of that race is called a lot of those are cancelled due to the whole COVID pandemic so um, they're doing a lot of these e-races where essentially you kind of sign up and you get to run the course yourself in the area that you live in just so you can get a bit of a run on, a bit of a sweat on, and then you get the chance to also get a medal or some other prizes. Obviously, the hackney half, these bloody motherfuckers, you know, they get you to pay 40 quid or something for a ticket, and now they're basically saying they're not going to give you a medal, they're just going to send you a goodie bag or a, a playlist from some DJ that made a mix for the race, like some absolute gash prizes, but, you know, it is what it is, what can you do, but I'm running for my own enjoyment at the moment, just trying to get a good anaerobic base, just trying to make myself a bit stronger, and generally trying to give myself a bit of a distraction, you know, day by day, during the lockdown, it's getting a little bit more intense, it's getting a little bit more hard to deal with, people are cracking all over the place, um, I think you can tell via the amount of people that are out this weekend, or this past weekend, you know, the streets were pretty packed, um, most of the places I go and run, especially on the streets or especially near the parks, there were a lot of people around more so in the beginning of the lockdown. It was kind of a little bit mellow. There weren't that many people outside. Everyone was kind of obeying the rules and being quite sensible. But now it feels like, you know, they've just basically hit a wall and people are like plateauing. They can't, not plateauing, people hit a wall and they just can't do it anymore. They just want to go out, have fun, get loose and whatever it may be. So, you know, I don't blame them. They, they do what they want to do, but I would rather give it some time. And I think I've always said to myself anyway, even when they do announce when everything goes back to normal or slowly, cause whenever things get phased back in or we get to some kind of level of normality, I'm still going to give it an extra month anyway. I'm not going to go out straight away, you know? I was that kind of guy in, when I was in school, and we used to go to fucking house parties and shit. I would always be the guy that would be like, you know, casing the area, making sure I know where I'm about, keeping my head on the swivel, you know, not being quick to go and approach some like, little light in the corner because I thought she looked bang. I would just wait it out, see what's going on, and then usually what would happen is that everything would reveal itself right you'd find out that little light in the corner is fucking you know dating that huge black dude in the, b at the front of the door you saw earlier right or her brother is that other guy who's got a scar on the side of his face right you'd notice all these things later on if you just gave it a bit, a bit of time but the guys that was so quick to go and catch a wine that went to get straight in on the food that went to start putting taking super malts out of the fucking fridge those are the ones that got chucked out those are the ones that got embarrassed in front of everybody all those kind of things happen in there so don't be that guy um but yeah apart from that it's been a bit it's been a bit mad this weekend just went by in a flash there were some streams online didn't watch many i kind of avoid them unless it's like dr rubenstein does a good little wednesday midweek stream she does so that's something you should probably check out um hector oaks and ellen alien and ellen alien sorry did a little mix recently too at the soon to be announced i'm assuming greece Muna location that was pretty cool but for the most part i'm tending to avoid them it kind of just bums me out and there's nothing fun about it maybe it's because i dj myself so the magic of somebody playing at home video recording themselves is a bit lost on me because i can do it myself i've actually bought a new setup and some audio equipment too actually to do that i've got some cables that i can plug in so i can record a set and live stream on twitch so i'll probably end up doing that this weekend but you know whatever in it i like doing my mixes for myself putting them up on soundcloud the whole like video recording of a mix doesn't really i don't know i don't really see the point in it personally unless it's for like potential bookers or potential club man or bar managers whatever it may be but for for regular civilians i don't know do you play that stuff in the background when you're doing your work what do you do because usually if i see a mix online like the one i re i've just um 
mentioned the Hector Oaks back to back with Ellen Ali, and I just grabbed that and just uh, whack it into one of those free online um, YouTube to MP3 converters, and just put it on my phone. That's a straight thing. Or, I, or if I've got like, I, you know, usually I would have like YouTube Premium on my phone or something downloaded, so you could just, you know, so I would purchase a YouTube Premium account so I could just play in the background. But I'm not essentially. I'm never gonna sit down and watch a mix in it. But I don't know. Maybe it's different. I guess if you're like a shot at the wit level person people will actually sit down and watch you because they like to see how you play right there's a bit of a performative aspect to it um but i guess for the most of the scene especially the techno dj especially the i'd imagine most of the techno DJs because they're not very showy because <coughs> i think all the tech house guys that are like featured on that um to put twitter account tina city i think all those people they're gonna be bang on the live stream because part of their thing is being performative in it it's still the hand moving and do the arm thing and twirling your hair and doing that little like sexy look in the camera but most regular schmegular everyday djs probably don't need to do that they just need to just what show people that they can mix we know that because we've seen you play you don't need to see a video of it really do you i don't know but maybe it's just me i don't know maybe i'm just um making a mountain out of a molehill uh but yeah apart from that everything else has been cool oh i watched them um, snow pierce so that was quite cool i watched this movie last year last week or this weekend or this weekend this past weekend i enjoyed that thoroughly good movie and i watched that mostly because i've heard the tv series is pretty bad which you know is to be expected usually when they do these kind of like um film adaptation sort of pieces it never really ends up the way you kind of <laughs> hope it's gonna end, end up so that didn't surprised me but i thought snowpiercer was a thoroughly enjoyable movie um a bit of a confusing end but you know again thoroughly enjoyable and then what else uh oh talking about tv series that's just wanted to mention i just finished watching uh white lines on netflix terrific series um probably not it's not gonna win you know an emmy or anything or golden globe or whatever prizes they give a tv show it's not gonna do that don't get me wrong but if you don't mind what if you don't mind watching a 10 episode series that probably should have been eight episodes about you know about this uh up and coming dj who basically goes to find himself in ibiza and his sister then goes to try and trace his last steps because it then was reported that he went missing and then they find out that he was died basically but you know that for your trailer i'm not spoiling anything so don't worry but it's a basically a bit of a murder mystery who done it sort of tv series under the prism of these uh young people that go to Ibiza to go and find you know sex love and fame whatever it may be and it's a thoroughly thoroughly enjoyable tv series um i think mostly it's it kind of has that it's probably um been affected or benefited from the covid19 glitter right the little sprinkling of covid19 because we're all at home we've all been devoid of enjoying our kind of uh, quote-unquote everyday lives right um if you are somebody that likes to go out and party you're going to get a lot of um good feelings from this you're going to be smiling from ear to ear during certain moments during certain speeches um it, you're going to identify a lot with some of the characters in it because you you know you know mates in your group that are like that people that you went you met when you've been outside so part of the reason why i liked it is because you know i'm locked indoors and i haven't been to a rave since you know i went to burgheim in march or something i don't know march was it march or february i don't know so you know it's been a while so a lot of the a lot of my impressions of it are going to be tinged in that regard right but i wrote some actual notes on what that's what i said but da, da, da. yeah so the the main girl and it's a bit annoying zoe she kind of has this she's i think she suffers from bipolar disorder or she went through an emotional breakdown or she had an emotional you know break when she discovered that her brother went missing um in the tv series so that's a bit hard to deal with i think sometimes in tv series when they when they have when somebody suffers from some sort of emotional disorder or has some kind of family uh, family strain they tend to really really lean into it aggressively i found it that's why part of the reason why i stopped watching homeland the main girl in homeland is bipolar i'm pretty sure if i remember correctly and she just continually just has these manic moments in the middle of just really crucial parts of the story i just throw everything off and don't really make any sense and you know people just keep indulging her which is you know probably bad to say but i just didn't like it, it didn't really sit right with me so i had to kind of skip it in homeland for that exact reason but you know what can you do and then um I thought the idea because it kind of reminded me a little bit of devs if you watch his tv series called devs right it's just pretty good um 
it's I think it's I don't know I think it's out on Hulu. I'm not too sure what show it's on, but um, it kind of reminded me of Devs because there is a part in Devs that basically they say um that humanity kind of is either following you either believe in free will or the fact that we follow this predetermined path, right? So in the in this TV series White Lions, the main character Zoe kind of has a bit of a has a bit of a decision to make. No, has a bit of an epiphany in, in terms of like why exactly she's still in Ibiza, right? Because I think she initially goes out there to try and solve the murder um, of her brother or explanation for his disappearance. Um, and then, you know, by episode six, she's still there wondering why she hasn't left yet. And part of it could be that, you know, this was the moment that she, this was the occasion that she needed to discover herself, right? And to kind of come off the tracks and sort of the predetermined tracks and sort of discover who she was really meant to be. Or was this where she was always meant to end up regardless anyway? Like, fate just, you know, put her there under these circumstances, but she was always meant to be there regardless. And it's really interesting because a lot of that happens sometimes when you go out and you have a really good night. Especially when you, the, f the earlier years of partying, there are times when you're on a dance floor and you meet somebody really cool in the, the, in the toilets or in the smoking area. You end up chatting, you have this weird connection or you have a weird moment where you suddenly are invited behind the fucking booth with the DJs, right? Or you bump into somebody that you've kind of looked up to. There's these weird moments that just happen when you're out partying. It just, you can't really explain whether it was kind of meant to be or not. Or, you know, there's been occasions where I've been in Bergheim and I've kind of bumped into somebody who I went to school with, right? Or somebody that knew me from football or something. Just these weird occasions. And it just seems to kind of all correspond at the same time. And you're not really sure if it's like something that was, you know, predetermined or if it was something that just happened as a consequence of fate, right? So she's kind of having to reconcile with that and figure out, like, what exactly is going on here? What is happening? And I think it's a good advertisement for Ibiza too, right? Because it does lend itself to this idea of Ibiza being this magical escape, right? This kind of, like, um, worst-kept secret, right? Um, people can go there. And it's probably one of the only places I think I can think of, maybe outside of uh, Berlin, in terms of club scene that isn't intrinsically tied to like adolescence and youth obviously a lot of the seminal kind of influential and sort of like uh really um important moments in your life will come when you're kind of in your formative years right when your frontal lobe hasn't really developed so much uh it will kind of form a lot of your personality or your kind of world view i understand earlier on but i be for special in the regard that it doesn't seem like a place that kind of only caters to the young, right? You can kind of still go there and have a good time um, in your older age, right? Um, it doesn't necessarily discriminate in that regard. It maybe discriminates in other situations, but for the most part, ageism isn't really a thing there, which is quite rare, which is which is quite rare in Clubland. It's, you know, Clubland, you kind of get the feeling that they're always trying to cater for the young, especially if you're promoting clubs, you'll know that you're kind of always perpetually having to, or perpetually, well, when you're promoting club nights, you're having to perpetually keep yourself up up to date and in tune with what the generation just behind you is doing and the generation just behind that just so you can keep your on yourself on your toes and if you don't the next person is just going to come and take over because they are in tune with what's going on so that i thought was a really good um uh, advertisement for abifa in that regard that you can just go there you know be a middle-aged mum with a with a kid and a husband at home and still get some kind of value from party not par not even partying that much but just being around people that are and kind of soaking up that vibe i think that was really cool to see but 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 what's another not added on here um i thought oh i said yeah i would um i also mentioned because of the age thing i also thought it'd be quite cool if there was a documentary about ib for that focus primarily on people that were still going at it now because i think that's part of the story that makes it really interesting this white lines is that everybody in the series of white lines is sort of broken right in their own regard especially the people that zoe goes and meets out there right the former boyfriend the former girlfriend of her brother um the drug dealers out there the moms the dads the brothers the people involved in the crew they're all sort of like broken and they're all sort of like hanging on to like their glory years right of the past when they were kind of the the guys or the girls in Ibiza but it seems like that's a common thing there right you always get these sort of like stories of these really wrinkled up bronze people older 
people that are just in Ibiza still kind of running the show, still walking around like their shit don't stink with their dick hanging out the front, right? Really giving it the big one. And I would think that would be a pretty good documentary to kind of focus in on those people that have kind of never left the party. They're perpetually, because I always wondered, like, that's one of the things, maybe it's a, it's a, again, it's a, it's a thing in my regard, but I think that's maybe something that's always stuck out to me. And that was maybe, I don't forgot who the quote was by, it might have been like something like a Dame Dash, I think, where he said something along the lines of like, you know, he never wanted to be the old guy in the club, right? He always wanted to have an exit plan, a route out, or something other than being in front of the camera or being a dancing man next to the rapper. So that if he is in a club, people can see him differently, right? You don't want to always try and be competing with the new hip kids out there. Especially imagine nowadays in hip hop trying to compete with kids in the club now who are doing all those fucking crazy dances and have fucking colourful dreadlocks on and cool Jordans. Like you're just not gonna be able to really match them in any way, shape or regard. You'd rather come in there and be like the owner of the club, right? Or the manager of the said kids, that might work, but to actually be on a front line fist bumping and stuff or fi uh, fist pumping isn't going to work. But I would really like to see a documentary on Ibiza for focusing in on that old older group. I think they'll be it'll be quite illuminating for people. In one respect, it'll make some people you know be feel a little bit sad for them, right? Oh man, that's pity them in one regard, but also be a really sobering, honest look at what exactly it means to devote yourself to a life of hedonism right of always being about the party like what does that actually look like because we don't actually know because sometimes you know we can start being in a rave we can start being in a party but then things change in it right you end up hooking up with somebody that probably isn't that well enamored with the club lifestyle you maybe move to another location something happens with your family things change in it so it's not necessarily you don't necessarily not everyone has a benefit of being able to operate within nightlife for the rest of their life it doesn't necessarily happen that way unless you're kind of one of the fortunate people who is able to kind of you know work your way into working with a hospitality group you maybe signed up and you worked with an agency you've got a booking uh platform that you use you've got a record label you manage artists there's ways that you can get in it but not everyone is able to do it if you're a punter you just go to raves until you kind of get bored but what does it actually look like when you stay you never ever leave what's it actually look like and, and are you the same person do you operate the same way are you still getting on it the same way do you still pre-drink the same way or do you kind of flip the way you kind of view your flip the way that you kind of experience it and you kind of conduct yourself in that environment um i'll probably think the latter right you probably couldn't go as hard as you did when you you obviously couldn't i'm assuming as hard as you did when you're 27 when you're 37 it's just not going to be the same thing you're gonna have to dial some things back right or maybe not but that's why i'd love to see a documentary i think that would be really really cool to watch man um what else was on oh yeah i liked seeing that that was a good one um i liked seeing the the what the, what i right here i liked seeing the depiction of ib as escapism hedonism and downright craziness i think they did that really well maybe because of the characters involved they all kind of represent different faces of ib for different space different faces of club land like nightlife um they were able to kind of show you that because i think that's probably my um one uh benefit one thing that i say is always a kind of a positive of a place like berlin is that on most kind of great places that have good club scenes is that you can go there at it and in a city more, more so i mean right you can go there in that city and essentially you would have no you should have a great a great city with great clubs you should have no idea that that has got kind of see the environment exist unless you want to go there it shouldn't be in your face right it should just it should just exist right you should just be able to kind of if you want to go to berlin and just have a good time going to galleries and popping into cool restaurants and record stores you can do that without never un never knowing about where these kind of seedy under the bridge sort of like dark room clubs are and i think that's the beauty of a place like i for what it looks like you can exp there's so many different parts of it right whether there's the kind of uh woo woo yoga sort of like spiritual side of it whether there's a kind of veganism side of it whether there's a party side of it whether there's a kind of agricultural side of it whether there's the family um you know family ties side of it obviously the food there's a lot of different aspects of it that you can um, explore that will not necessarily lead you to clubland 
but that's a, like an added bonus onto it and i feel that's one of the beauties of it because you know people live there people make you know careers there they raise families there they meet life partners there so there's obviously a part of that island that is special in that regard but i think they did a really good way of representing those kind of different facets of the three different phases right escapism hedonism and just plain old craziness 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 of craziness i was gonna say yeah and then the other thing that i thought was interesting was i thought the club teams would look quite authentic for the most part they captured it vibe really well um i think with movies or with tv series my kind of thinking of club scenes is that they're usually always a bit naff especially once you find out that you know when they film club scenes from what i've heard they usually film them with no actual volume in the club there's not actually nothing playing they film them silent and then they kind of dump the music over or they play it really really low like a you know, like a music video right you'd see music but that's sometimes music videos they play they have a really loud beats by dre pill or something in the background whilst they kind of and they kind of sync up the, the the sort of like i guess the lips with the music later on in the editing but um that kind of spoils the kind of magic of it but i think they did a good job of depicting even some of the earlier scenes where they're partying in their home country or in manchester they picture it they they just they kind of um capture the whole warehouse sort of like warehouse rave back in that day vibe really well and then they also do the same thing with the kind of early 90s late 90s sort of like vibe in that era too that i kind of read about and see in documentaries it sort of looked quite similar so i think they did pay quite a lot of attention to some of those archival footage archival images and videos whatever it may be real life accounts from people and really did a good job of making sure it looked as authentic as it can be because again like i said it's really difficult to do in a tv series at all um and then i thought the, the, the chest they had a oh and the, yeah i read here the chest they had about all, the chest they had all cooked up about their future plans but instead their life was way more bleak than what it was yeah um it was very close it was very close to home and very autobiographical in that way in the in the fact that you know part of the allure of nightlife or going out is the fact that you can escape your everyday life right you can momentarily temporarily put a pause on whatever's happening in your nine to five in your monday to friday and kind of just let loose you can reinvent yourself especially if you're a club kid right you can get a completely new diff different outfit on you can really manipulate your face differently with makeup um you can maybe have a completely different social group that you hang out with you go clubbing it's just a completely different you right you can essentially just pl press pause on real life and then press play on this kind of alternate reality um and then when you go in that space there's so much optimism people are such on especially for the most part people are, are are on their good best behavior in terms of wanting to impress in terms of wanting to seem cool in terms of wanting to connect that you know you can sometimes be caught in these conversations when you've maybe had a bit too much to drink where you're sort of like planning your future with strangers and you have this optimistic sort of like you know euphoric a utopian vibe of what could happen to your future the possibilities are endless but then sometimes when you leave or when you kind of look in the cold heart day of truth especially the morning after you sort of realize just how ordinary and bleak your actual life is and that is usually the kind of i think in the beginning when i did when i always go coming out it's a kind of thing that used to bum me out a lot but then part of the thing that used to really but what really saved me what kind of um, allowed me to kind of put that thinking to the side oddly enough was when i started getting involved in the startup industry right when i first read like the four hour work week and i started to read about some of these other founders of companies right mark zuckerberg of uh, facebook jack dorsey of twitter you know jeff Bezos of amazon you start to read their accounts and where they come from their backgrounds all these other you know silicon valley y comedy uh, you start to find out all these amazing people that are actually changing the fabric of life as we know it right and you start to realize oh they're just like me and you right they're just regular average everyday people like you and i but they decided to commit you know ungodly amount of hours and hard work into making this particular product service or app work and that kind of allowed me to think okay even though these conversations in nightclubs can be a bit mindless they can be a bit nonsensical you can have sometimes think you are you know way better than what you actually are i think that little bit of hope that you get during the nightlife is really important to kind of hold you down throughout the week it's really important to have that uh option to let loose and to kind of you know uh, put aside your worries just for a couple of hours just for a few hours a night or for the weekend it's really really important just even even especially now during covid19 lockdown what i realized that just even having the thought of it being a, an option in your head is better than not having the option in your head at all 
it does a lot to your mental psyche i want to say it does because that's that's probably explains a lot why the kind of working class uh um kind of crew that populate those sort of like tech house nights are so uh loyal and they're so fucking you know on it and ready to go for these parties because they really do treat those raves those festivals those club nights as their one moment as their couple of occasions a year or whatever it may be to actually let loose and enjoy so i think a lot of people that are a bit cynical and you know maybe take the music too seriously or maybe have the luxury of working in a career that allows them to sort of work and be on a laptop you don't necessarily see that but i think a lot of that thinking about it watching that beef it does explain a lot of the you know the appeal of those kind of like you know uh i don't know patrick topings or those kind of michael bb sort of people right who have this really committed hardcore group of fans especially and i would say mostly working class people who love their tech house and really really get on it once they get out there and that party in that space because they don't necessarily take it for granted right these moments to them are very precious and i'm pretty sure some of these people have met you know some of their closest friends or you know form some great relationship people when they're out in these places so um i think that was a really really good thing that they did in the series man i really really enjoyed it as you can tell me rabbing on about this um what else did i say on the list here um and of course it makes me miss clubland of course i think any kind of series like this i'm kind of trying to you know subconsciously avoid because i don't want to get a bit of fomo for a tv screen which is a bit sad or for a laptop screen which is even sadder but yeah it does make me miss clubland it does make me miss you know just the mindless conversations that you have the energy the vibe the sound the smell going in at somewhere at the pitch dark right queuing up outside of a warehouse space somewhere and it's pitch dark and they're walking out and the lights are shining in your face you get in the public you know getting public transport and having regular um everyday people looking at you like you're a decrepit degenerate because you look like you've been in yesterday's clothes and it's 10 a.m in the morning all that stuff i absolutely miss 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 but i recommend you check it out it's a really good tv series white lines now on netflix if i had to give it a rating i'd say maybe like a six or maybe high low seven out of ten decent enough watch if you didn't want it to watch um like i said with most of these sort of tv series on netflix they probably could have got away with having it be eight episodes probably didn't need to be 10 but if you're into it and you like a bit of you know um party lifestyle tv series definitely check it out man very very fun um definitely uh, a, a good watch for the stuff that's on netflix now at the moment anyway let's move on what else do i want to talk about here hmm nelly v or oh, nelly v ludicrous that was funny did you watch that nelly v ludicrous um that was a versus bat rap battle that they're having right or oh, versus battle that kind of swiss beats is basically set up but happened over the weekend they essentially get to play i think i'm not sure how many tunes it is but they get to pick a selection of tunes i think it's about 15 maybe it might be certain they get to play uh they go one one each they do it on instagram live you basically tune in via whoever's battling in that actual thing and then you kind of view on your phone or your desktop especially since now they've allowed you to watch instagram live via your desktop browser obviously those kind of things work you know very well based on the person's internet connection and nelly's internet connection just completely failed him during that battle but in internet connection aside what it made me realize was number one that era of hip-hop just kind of formed a different caliber a different sort of gravy of a hip-hop artist they have legitimate hits and it made me think about the hits that we have nowadays whether or not they're actually legitimate because i remember that was one of my criticisms i used to have against parties like work it and like you know uh you, what was it called um oh, what's the other one called i forgot the fucking other one what was it called right but a lot of those hip-hop parties that we have here in london they'd have a tendency to always play like really old stuff and this is during i don't know this might have been this is my 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 point of view of this might have happened during the whole drake heyday right or rick ross kind of resurgency where it didn't really make sense why they kept going back to all these classic songs when there was so many good when there was so much good shit happening in the moment right but then what i ended up thinking watching this nelly and ludicrous rap out is that legitimately especially if you've dj that's the thing that i realized quite quickly sometimes when i'd go and dj on the weekend and a really big tune popped you know dropped on the thursday or the friday and i'd want to play it straight away because i thought everyone else was listening to it 
it would get fucking crickets in the club crickets right it happens on so many different occasions and what you realize is that most everyday people average everyday guy or girl they don't necessarily listen to all the new stuff when it comes out as soon as it comes out they listen to it when they can get around to it but most of their life their soundtrack to their life has been formulated um, around these classic hip-hop songs they all basically grew up on them they heard it in the background when their mom is cleaning the kitchen and they're sort of fucking around they've heard it played uh, in school discos and house parties they're very familiar with those old school classics so they have an affinity they have a emotional connection to them that i just don't think someone like you know worst case scenario someone like the, like the baby could he ever really have that same emotional connection will people ever have that same emotional connection to the baby as they did with you know hearing nelly hot in here for the first time in the house party and it was actually hot like will that actually happen i don't think so and i think that's what made me realize when watching the verses like these guys even though the, the battle itself was very much it favored ludicrous more so than that nelly because i think ludicrous probably popped better at the time his collaborations were a little bit more intentional he obviously did some amazing stuff with timberland with pharrell um some of his, some of his guest features were out of this world but i just think in general the way he kind of raps where he flows the kind of beats that he jumps on it probably suits him it, he suits the style of a, that kind of battle more so than nelly sort of stuff right um but still nelly uh, you know for his level of artistry and his level of talent and ability he was still able to sell you know a gazillion amount of albums and this was back in the day when you know album sales actually counted nowadays with streaming it's sort of hard to really to really judge who's really popular or who's really kind of penetrating culture because stream especially if you have autoplay on on spotify you can just catch loose streams just because you're just there right you're in a space but back in the day you had to be intentional and actually go and buy somebody's album specifically listen to what they're playing and then make a decision whether you want to listen to somebody else true free baby ski word of mouth but with streaming everyone essentially gets a fair go at the weapon everyone gets a chance to just have their song sit next to drake or whatever it may be um but i think yeah so watching that it made me appreciate um nelly for what he was it also made me appreciate how much of a talent uh ludicrous was but it also made me question as to what really what's really gonna test last the test last the test of time from this generation of this era of hip-hop that we have at the moment what's really gonna you know what are we what are we going to listen to in 20 years time and think oh my god i remember when this drop i don't really know if we have many um and that's really the kind of challenge a lot of these guys have you know you look at someone like a tory lane it's like has he really got a tune or a couple of tracks that he can play now and you drop in a club and everyone will go nuts and go crazy i don't know that's the issue it's really uh, it's really weird the kind of fame people have now at the moment they all i think everyone has a lot of money because i think there's more money to give there's more fans out there there's more revenue streams so i think the money sort of like blinds you as to who's really successful but i guess honestly if you've ever dj'd and you've ever actually had to play hip-hop songs you soon realize exactly who's actually permeated culture and who's actually really popular what people actually listen to day by day and i remember i used to do this thing but i don't do it anymore because i don't usually go on a central line anymore to work but when i used to go on a central line it's really packed i'd always kind of like uh spy people's phones and see what they're listening to right especially if it was like young girls or young boys just to kind of catch a vibe as to like what they're actually listening to day to day because what people say they listen to on social is different to what she actually you know is a soundtrack to their morning commute and you'd be shocked at some of the old stuff people also listen to like i don't know a drake album from t you know a drake album that's not recent maybe the the one just before it uh a remix track that came out ages ago some old school fucking uk garage track like just some weird stuff you'd be like oh okay this is what people are actually listening to not what they say they listen to on social when they want to seem cool or seem like they're with the times um so yeah that that, that that battle was funny um again the audio issues are gonna hold it back i hope hopefully I don't know how they're going to do that but if they if, if instagram could implement something or maybe work alongside with sweet speech in terms of sending the people that participate in the battles a little pack of how they can get the best audio via instagram that would probably be quite beneficial because you know for some reason ludicrous is i think at the time lenny did say he was going through some sort of storm wherever he lives right it was affecting his wi-fi but 
um, just the sound alone is probably a thing that you'd want to get set up beforehand. But it was great to see Nelly kind of getting really drunk, really loose. He was feeling himself a lot way more than Ludacris was. Ludacris's face was classic in the whole thing. He had a complete stone face, looked like, you know, he has the, probably the personality of a brick. But, you know, when it comes to actually artistry and making hit records, that's how he speaks. He doesn't speak like us. You know, he doesn't conversate in these kind of normal rambling chit chats. He only speaks in hits. When he gets on that board, you know what time it is. But yeah, I thought that was really funny, man. That was a really good battle. I recommend you check it out. It probably is available on YouTube to restream again. They put they put the playlist up on Spotify. I'm pretty sure of the hits they played in the track for track. So definitely keep an eye out for that if you're that way inclined. Da, 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 da. Oh, and then we'll lastly talk about this. Bundesliga football was back over the weekend, didn't it? Did you watch any of it? Um, I watched a bit. I watched Dortmund game v Schalke. I watched a little bit of the Bayern v FC um, v Union Berlin, and that was it. Those are two games I watched. And hmm, what can I say about it? Um, obviously great to have football back, right? Been missing it. Um, I think the conversation about football coming back in this country has been very different to the stuff you hear in America regarding the reopening of the economy. Um, there seems to be a lot more goodwill uh, towards the from fans towards football players in terms of them having reservations about coming back and putting their families in danger and stuff. Um, there seems to be a little bit more ill will towards the uh, football league and the broadcasting companies for kind of putting the pressure on to get the football back again because they're seeing it as essentially just a cash grab because they don't want to leave any money on the table which is understandable considering it's got nearing the billions um so it's a kind of a complicated question to have and obviously you've got the looming um thing especially if you're united fan of the potential of the essentially being liverpool being awarded the league even though they didn't win it uh due to if they do implement this kind of uh virtual ppp thing or ppg thing i forgot what it's called where they essentially allocate points to teams based on their past form sort of thing i don't know how to really explain it but it's sort of like how that kind of roughly works so some you know most fans can't necessarily bear to see liverpool fans you know self-flagellating themselves or you know self whatever else that other word is themselves once they win the title <coughs> obviously if you're a liverpool fan you're kind of um hungry to kind of get this league side again so you can see the league out and win your inevitable league title so it's very complicated but in general having football back is good i think germany were obviously ahead of schedule they're obviously ahead of testing their numbers are way low compared to what we are which have made the whole suggestion that we should open up the economy really really weird considering just how high amount number of deaths we have in the uk but hey ho what do i know but having football back was interesting uh, it was weird that they had this really different system of bringing the subs on. The subs sort of like came on through a different sort of like way and then the subs went off a different way. So the sub bench as well, they had like a two seat gap in between them. They sort of took the seats out. Everyone on the sub bench bar the manager had the face mask on. Um, they weren't allowed to touch each other, even though they were playing right next to each other, slight tackling, you know, blocking each other in the penalty box when they came to celebrate a goal, they couldn't hug, which was really strange. Um, uh, that was really odd and again just the lack of I think Bundesliga is similar to like the Premier League part of its appeal is obviously the fast counter attacking loose with you know they like to, in the Bundesliga defending is with a small D in it they don't do capital D defending it's all small D defending but part of the reason why Bundesliga is so popular is because of the fan culture right um, they have you know they're football mad over there same that we are in the UK um, and the fans, you know, of some teams are have the ability to essentially, quote unquote, you know, football cliche, you know, suck the ball into the net. And without that, it's very difficult to make football a compelling product, um, less so than maybe um, UFC or MMA, which, you know, I think I made the point the other day that, you know, if you go and train in a, in a, in a mixed martial arts gym or even any kind of martial arts gym, it's quite common for people to spar or to do, you know, or to fight, quote unquote, um, just in the gym, right? With maybe, you know, no more than 20 people watching you. It's a day to day thing that you do when you go and train. It's not, it's not um, anything out of the norm. So to take that, extrapolate it and put it into the UFC, you know, one of the biggest p p uh, platforms there is to do mixed martial, mixed martial arts, it's no different really. So there's not much of a departure. Um, if anything, watching UFC made me realize, I think a lot of people have said this, the fight's actually better with male audience because, you know, 
there's not as much adrenaline in the or in the stadium, right? Um, you know, in the arena, fighters aren't necessarily because uh, this happens sometimes when the fight is quote unquote boring and the fans start booing, right? Because no one's hitting each other in the head with spinning kicks or anything, right? Um, the fights were a bit more technical. You got to see, you got to hear and see what the different coaches actually make. Like you got to see levels of the coaching, right? Considering how Eddie Bravo kind of, you know, uh, f- kind of flat filled his face with the advice he gave to Tony Ferguson. But uh, UFC was actually ben- benefited a lot from having the audience. Um, I don't think football did. Um, and I just think most leagues will look at what the Bundesliga did and think to themselves, is it really worth the hassle? Because the Bundesliga can do it because I think they have a lot of protocols in place to make sure the players are safe and they're taking all the necessary measurements and, you know, they've kind of laid out a plan on what they think is going to work. But I don't think the other leagues will want to go through that amount of hassle and i just think in terms of just an you know operational aspect of it and just trying to make sure things work out well wouldn't you rather just want to you know null and void the season now or just award you know the league title to liverpool so are the relegation spots because that's going to happen to happen as well you can't have one or the other whatever you want to do and then just start planning for next season having the protocols already in place as to what you're going to do because you know everyone's banking on a vaccine in order to kind of get back to normal but if it doesn't if we don't get a vaccine you need to have something in place that's going to allow people to feel comfortable in order to play football and you have to listen to the football players right they're the kind of main product in this equation without them they can't really play games and they even they can get they can keep us fans out of the stadium but without the players you're not going to play anything so you need to figure out a way of kind of appeasing or alleviating some of their fears and I think it probably would be best to sort of like concentrate on Kuna, you know, especially the FA. They've, you know, they've been stumbling and fumbling over their feet for ages. They're waiting for the government to make a decision. The government haven't made a decision yet, and they still haven't made anything, any inroad. So I think for them, if they're taking this long to make any kind of decision now, they probably would be in their best interest to um, get to a conclusion sooner rather than later as to what they want to do with the season so that they can plan already for the 21 22 season coming up because there's going to be a lot of work to be done that regard so yeah i wasn't really sold on the bundesliga to be honest this weekend i think by and large people will probably get bored of watching football with no fans it's similar to when you watch you know your team play pre-season matches on tour somewhere in some you know whatever nation you don't really give a shit watching it it's not the same level of competitiveness because there's no fans playing if anything this is probably different because a lot of the football players have been at home sort of like chomping at a bit to maybe get back on the uh, get back on the pitch and play again so the, the level of intensity is a bit different than what it would be if a friendly but it's still not the same without the fans and it really isn't um you know there's no point in the playing about the fans i think in my opinion but again what do i know so Jump into some other stuff that I thought was of interest here. I've got some, I think this is some like general sneaker news just to kind of mix up the, you know, constant talk about COVID and Corona, which gets a little bit boring after a while. So number one, we have uh, Fergadelic. I think this is the same Fergadelic that does the stuff for Palace, right? Um, legendary artist who also works with Arise or Aries, however you pronounce it, I'm pretty sure, right, he's one half of a rise, or Aries, I'm sure, maybe I'm mistaken this, but this I've just seen on Hypebeast, it says, Fergadelic and Vans Vault return with an acid wash collection, which looks pretty cool, um, Vans have been getting a little bit of, um, they've been, they've been left in the dust a bit, didn't it? it feels like, especially with people that are into sneakers or footwear or streetwear, it feels that Vans are not the cool thing anymore, maybe it's a consequence of, supreme laying off the vans collaborations they're not doing them as much as they were previously maybe it's because vans have pur- pur- purposely stopped doing many collabs and maybe focus on more their inline stuff or maybe because there's just so many shoes out there on the market now kids just you know there's just not enough shoes for the people out there so it is what it is you know things come in cycles but um i still think for every guy's wardrobe especially people that are into streetwear a good pair of vans whether it's a kind of basic black and white um old schools new schools half cabs uh, skates uh, uh slip-ons you know skate highs whatever they may be right they are some of the best shoes that you'd wear they're very versatile they go with a bunch of different outfits and for the most part they're widely available right in different styles different looks whatever you more might want to be so i think they're still very very much underrated for what they are in my humble opinion and this is from hype so it's the vans vault collection which is obviously going to be some of their best and premium level stuff 
you have uh, what they call again is an era, an era, and a chucker. Chuckers usually been my favorite shoe actually from Vans for a while. That and maybe the half cab, in terms of the shape, in terms of the versatility, in terms of how you could wear them. You know, with some nice shorts, with a pair of khaki fucking you know dickies, whatever they may be. Um, I think they're really really cool models. I was never really a big Eras fan personally, maybe because at the, at the time it used to only be worn by people that you used to wear. Remember the people that used to wear Eras with skinny jeans. And I think because my feet are so fucked, I was kind of probably a bit jealous that I couldn't wear them like that style. So I tend to wear like chuckers or half cabs with like bagger jeans because I could kind of get away with it. I don't know. But yeah, those are my two favorite models. So you've got here the era and the chucker. The chucker, the era sort of features, I'm guessing, some of the Ferg's kind of artwork on there with the acid watch set as well. Embra is it embroidered there or printed? I think it might be printed. It's printed. So that's cool. And then, of course, the chucker, which looks beautiful, and some clothing too. Okay, that's nice. You got a hoodie too with some of the same sort of illustration. Some nice sweatpants and a cool pair of glasses that they do as well. They do pretty decent glasses, Vans, to be honest. Um, and this is going to launch May 23rd, 2020. So, if you want to cop that, definitely check that out. I think this is a pretty decent collaboration, all things considered, personally. I'll probably wear the fuck out of the chuckers. And even that, the chuckers with the even just wearing it with the fucking tracks would look really cool as a one little outfit. It's a great little collaboration. This is um following a recent corner shop inspired capture collection, Fergus and Fergadelic Purcell, sorry, um bands have lined up again to release the second of the reworked classic styles. Uh based on the memory of Ferg's youth and the collection of features an OG authentic and chucker each in acid wash colorways to round out the collection the pair have also introduced an apparel and accessories offering featuring joggers hoodies and sunglasses so what was the first one okay they had their first collab collaboration i don't remember seeing that one what did that look like the first collaboration let's see this as it loads up here oh okay the first one was pretty cool as well wow that's brilliant corner shop drink pack that's fucking cool so that's a chucker with all these little little corn all these little um fizzy pop i guess illustrations all over the top and again on the midsole that is really really cool i love that that's probably my favorite one wow even the eras look really cool in that sort of pattern it's really really nice okay well done to ferg so those are due at what the 23rd 2020 so definitely check those out if you like yourself a pair of vans very very nicely done Boom, boom, boom. Let's get that off the screen. And then next, what do we have here? I went to talk about. Uh, let's skip that one. That one's not the most interesting. Oh, this is a good one, isn't it? So, Golf and Va Golf, Golf Wang and Levi's collaboration dropping very soon. I think in the next couple of days. Brilliant, brilliant collab. Um, I think Tyler doesn't get the credit he deserves with Golf Wang, especially considering how he had to pivot away from the old future brand, the OF stuff. It's very different from what he's doing with the OF with the donuts and all the little kind of crazy cat illustrations, maybe because he's grown up. But the way he's essentially um, slowly but surely evolved his personal style and his brand is very much in line with what I liked about the kind of OG era of streetwear when, you know, when it was kind of when to get when um, cut and sew was a kind of rite of passage or sort of something you earned as you kind of went on as a brand you earned the right to do cut and sew or you kind of discovered it later on when there was a need for it for instance if there was a company that could make a bag for you and if under a collaboration umbrella why would you then go and make your own bag you rather put your resources in something else but if it gets up if it came to a point where you just wanted to make you were just wanted to have your own voice in the accessories department or accessories category then you go and make your own stuff right but it'd be a natural progression for what you're doing it won't just come out of the blue that's what I loved about streetwear that era. Nowadays, you know, streetwear brands come out of the fucking womb and they've got, you know, everything. They've got t-shirts, outerwear, footwear sometimes. Like, it's just insane, right? It's just too much. You kind of need to give your customers time to sort of, like, grow with you, um, to sort of mature with the brand. And I think golf wines are probably a good example of it, especially if you think about what Tyler did with, with the odd future brand in the beginning from what it is now. It's definitely uh, progressed really slowly, but in a really well and methodical way. And this collaboration with Levi's is a really good um, summation of just where he's kind of gone. Um, because you wouldn't ever think, you know, he'd be somebody who would collaborate with Levi's maybe in the beginning when he was drawing all of these 
jeans maybe you might afford that but not in this way it's very very classily uh very very classy done um so he says here go find your levi's create a polka dot capsule for the 501 day um and you've got this amazing polka dot jean jacket and denim trousers or sort of denim jeans which look fucking beautiful i'm sure this will be very popular they're gonna fly off the shelf um you've got this little addition of the back pocket with a golf emoji um sorry um golf motif logo with a sort of heart symbol on the back it looks fucking gorgeous absolutely love so it says yeah um for the text on hype it says i'll put it up on the screen for you guys to see if you can see that yep so it says golf wang label has unveiled a collaboration with levi's to celebrate his this year's 501 day marking the anniversary of the jeans in introduction in 1873 for the 2025 one day tyler has put his twist on the iconic piece for introduction of a colorful polka dot pattern on an ecru denim base as well as covering the classic 50193 jeans the rainbow print polka dot pattern also features a vintage fit trucker jacket the 93 jean features a boxier heavier waist fit than the other 501 cuts although it has the same length uh, has the same straight leg cut giving it a baggier style chosen by tyler's which is pretty cool i think that's the key again to most collaborations the the devil is always in the detail it's not always sort of like going in there and doing some crazy pattern or style it's mostly just taking whatever's in the archives tweaking it maybe to your liking or purposely going in and saying that i would much rather have this boxer fit on the jeans and maybe have a little bit more of a tailored fit on the jean jacket i like that silhouette i think it looks beautiful and again it kind of steers away from the straight slim cut silhouette you maybe are more familiar with with some of the Le other levi collaboration maybe you know supreme would be a good example of it they usually tend to go for a little bit more of a slimmer straighter fit but i like i prefer the sort of like you know old school baggy fit on the jeans where you can essentially you know maybe size down and make them slimmer or you can maybe get them a, a half a size bigger for that baggy fit that kids tend to like like these days um so it's here such a style is also referenced through the sizing patch that showcases both the levi's and low and the golf size sizing on the pieces finishing off the design is a golf wine logo complete with a heart and flower on the back pocket but yeah brilliant stuff man so good so that's a jacket there with the massive Levi's logo on the inside and then the jeans oh so good man I'd wear them both man honestly I don't know what to choose obviously the jacket's probably the easiest thing to wear because you know most people just wear that jacket as just a loud piece they're wearing with some kind of neutral tones down below but I think I'd wear the entire thing head to toe for sure it's really really good man it's gonna come out what in stores May 20th uh what Levi's and golf wang stores so definitely check that out because I'm sure it'd be priced really well too because the um, Ty does a really good job of pricing these golf wank stuff um, really well for the most part and of course the lookbooks are always great photographer's always amazing but yeah well done to him man that looks really cool really really impressed with that and um, hopefully it hangs about if I do end up buying it I would like to have a chance to get it if possible but that probably is not going to happen so you know we will stop complaining about that one so let's move on um, what else do we have here um, not really bothered about them ones. Well, I thought this was good. This is um, Awake, the brand helmed by the former what was he brand director of Supreme, right? Is it brand former brand director? Uh, what's his name again? Is his name on here? Ba ba ba. Angelo, yeah. Um, the former Supreme employee has now kind of seek past his new and he's got his own brand called Awake, which is doing some bits and pieces. Again, like I said before, this is the marquee of a, you know, you can tell he comes from good streetwear stock, right? He's streetwear royalty in terms of the way he's evolved and developed the brand. As we've kind of seen it, you know, it got introduced to us maybe through a couple of snapbacks, right? Or hooded or hooded tops or maybe t-shirts and now look how quickly it's evolved right the first slide here we had this amazing flannel t-shirt with this sort of like rose uh embroidery the embroidery or screen print i'm not too sure half tone half half tone right you got this amazing and then the lookbook of course great casting with the models photography is awesome got a great cardigan here on the right so you can definitely see, you, you would have this is kind of quintessential street fair right he started off with snapbacks started off with hoodies and then essentially he, he always had the goal to kind of get himself to a point where he could you know have his own interpretation of what he thinks a cool flannel shirt looks like what he thinks a cool mohair jumper or cardigan looks like and that's what i love about street wear the slow mode the slow methodical approach um these brands have to kind of evolving over time they don't rush um they don't 
don't take it they don't take the easy route they kind of hope and pray that their customers especially their people that are fans of the brand are going to stick with them um as they kind of evolve over time and i think awake have kind of done that in a really cool way because i still think of them as a mostly a youth orientated brand right i don't think people many people my age probably wear awake but they kind of done this weird thing where they're able to kind of straddle both ends so a guy like me is interested to it and obviously they kind of cater to the sort of like young kids that are coming up and want something that is maybe adjacent with supreme but isn't probably as loud or as bait as supreme um but yeah this is their uh lookbook for spring summer 20 uh full collection here featured we can maybe read some of it the text i'll go for the business go for the pictures fuck the text but yeah the pictures so uh, that, that that flannel i'd wear the hell out of it with the rose um sort of embroidery throughout the middle of the chest or sort of half print um the cardigan they, they're starting to do some really great outwear pieces in terms of jackets the varsity they did for all the coach jacket sort of thing they did from a couple of seasons ago was really impressive so you can definitely see they're kind of cranking up their pressure in that regard um great sweatshirt there with the awake logo could be really nicely done and of course this sort of like classic hawaiian -y, what, do, what do you call these shirts these sort of like short sleeve shirts that everyone's doing at the moment with this great pattern again really nicely done there um again that same jacket in a different color looks amazing sort of like a lucky eight or lucky was it called lucky bull what are the jackets called they they're very popular in new york right during the 80s or 90s i forgot the style of it but it reminds me of that but yeah very nicely done too um they've done well with these sort of like tonal hoodies with the sweatpants is beautiful and it's very under it's a very under um, it's a very underserviced segment of streetwear i think that's where maybe kiff really slid in and did really well that sort of like do you call it lounge wear or leisure wear whatever it's called where i mean just like sweat sweatpants and sweat tops right but i think if you're supreme it's really impossible if you're a kid buying supreme to you know to get yourself a suit because most of those things are going to sell out straight away and any other brand that's doing them you probably won't and maybe pat is a good example right doing good tracksuit sets but i think that's something that is maybe maybe only maybe uh, popular with european clients maybe i don't know how people american kids are with sweatshirts and sweat tracksuits and shit but i do think a lot more brands should be catering to kids that want to wear stuff like this right maybe with a big varsity jacket or some kind of a larry jacket on or whatever it may be but there is a kind of a market for it uh, sweatsuits that aren't you know your regular champion shit or whatever and they've done really well with these ones so one in purple and one in sort of like a lilac -y, tiffany kind of sort of colorway really really well done again and i love and i love the addition as girl with this sort of like embroidered logo that he was always really popular to do here i love it i think it looks really cool maybe it's a kind of nod to these era of supreme but i love that embroidered logo a great denim hat what's that logo here on the hat is that william de reading a book or something i think so um maybe it's a maybe it's a, maybe it's a pun a little play on words with the awake right stay work maybe reading a book or something i'm not too sure um i love this as well the little valentine's t-shirt sort of thing awake is special um very hispanic in that regard right with the rosary and the beard oh they got nelson mandela t-shirt brilliant well done there and the same print on the hat we got in there they got like a vix vapor rub um t-shirt which i'm assuming has some sort of connection with him growing up i'm assuming there's a great story behind that vix vapor rub t-shirt i'm pretty sure a black on black hoodie with the awake logo i think that's gonna be very popular tonal hoodie and then you've got this great t-shirt here on the left in god we trust in the president we don't <laughs> that's amazing right it says a lot without saying anything really and it's probably something that could um it's not going to uh, that's the problem you think of yourself if you start making trump negative sort of merch or clothing right you sort of sort of what's that word called um you sort of stuck in the moment in time right in a few years it's probably a bit corny wearing a t-shirt somebody decapitating trump's head it looks a bit preposterous but i guess when you just write the president everyone kind of gets what you mean and who you're talking about uh well very very nicely done and maybe there's a player on it as well with the kind of bright future color of it right based on you know orange man bad maybe you don't know um you've got another one awake nyc this kind of reminds me of like a bad brains logo i'm not too sure if that's similar to it but i really like that um and yeah and this great one so this is probably my favorite one they've made actually it's got it's got this illustration of a of a of a skull or someone's head um looks maybe similar to something that you see maybe in 1984 by george orwell and at the back it says i'm not falling for that shit again and at the front 
I think we just got the same thing. And then it's got civilization, the uncivil, civilizing the uncivilized. And also, it's got Awake New York. That's going to be very popular, that long sleeve t shirt, I'm pretty sure. Um, just finished this quote, the text here for the accompanying post. It says, after, be, after beginning the year with collaborative release alongside Kaha Whip and Rebook and Awake, and what has now presented its full spring 2020 collection. The collection features a number of signature Awake NYC pieces and designs, such as this classic logo hoodies, t shirts, alongside a selection of more eye catching items. A standout theme throughout the collection is Awake NYC's collaboration with artist Sean Friedman, which includes a silk camp cat. Uh, silk camp shirt, sorry, and five panel camp cap. Okay, awesome. That's that's what we saw earlier. Elsewhere, key pieces in the collection also include a colorful mohair cardigan, embroidered roses flannel shirt, and a corduroy chinel patch baseball jacket. As well as the signature hoodie pieces, Angela Basco label also presents a range of graphic pieces, standout prints from its 20, spring 2020 collection, include ranges political slogans of God we trust and present we don't, as well as a quote from Nelson Mandela and the civilizing the uncivilized pieces. Take a look. Um, this is due to come out when it says yeah the collection will launch in Awake NYC's web store uh, Dover Street Market site on 19th 11am and the Dover Street Market Ginza also May 22nd and last two cents man they're hitting all the markets isn't it well done to Angela man some great distribution there isn't it on web store Dover Street Essence bloody hell smashing it so yeah like I said I think Essence is, um, sorry um, Awake uh, Pata said Stussy there's so many great um supreme alternatives if kids like that kind of aesthetic right the quintessential streetwear brands right maybe even stray rats is a good example out uh, there for kids to cop um and definitely awake is definitely up there i think they're gonna do some great stuff going forward and this again this is not this might be i don't know what season is this the fifth fourth season and they've already kind of evolved to this level just imagine what they're gonna do in a few more years isn't it once they get um a bit more wind in their sails and some more money in the bank to really explore some different uh pieces and areas it'll be really interesting to see what they do because i'm sure andrew's going to do some more stuff outside of just clothing as well right in terms of empowering the youth and all that good stuff so um yeah definitely a brand to watch definitely a brand to kind of back in this kind of um formative time and you know if there's somebody you are gonna trust with your money i'd imagine it'd be someone like you know what he's doing so yeah definitely check them out man i'm a big fan of what he does with the brand 100 percent um, what else I want to talk about here before I leave you guys? Oh, I thought this video was really funny. Um, some people went out, right? Some people went out, or we didn't go out. Some people went out, some people went out. Did I go out? I didn't go out. Let me read this. I thought it kind of got crazy. Boom, 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 boom. Come on, load, load, load. It's taking ages to load. Is it going to load or not? Oh, maybe there's too many windows open. I'm going to yeah, just pause this one. So some people have went out this weekend because they just couldn't you know stay in which i completely understand i'm not one of these people that's going to shame anyone for going out i think that's really preposterous and a bit you know infantile really we're all stuck at home no one wants to be at home we'd rather be outside of our friends getting fucked up getting on it hanging out with our parents with our family members whatever we do right going shopping people want to do stuff they don't want to be indoors so if they want to go out let them go out but it's just find it funny where people congregate to go the kind of group thing that leads everyone to go to the beaches over the weekend was just jokes i thought that was one of the hilarious bits and this is a this is a little clip from the telegraph it says bits has hitched the beach in south end and then there's this kind of really adorable dude that's trying to warn everybody about what they need to do in order to kind of make sure that they kind of uh don't cause any damage whilst they're out on the beach but i thought this is just jokes just to kind of hear how we kind of get down in britain really <laughs> regarding this issue so it says here, the public is being asked to think carefully before heading for the seaside. This is a polite note, it's right. Think carefully, not not stay. You know, in America they got that stay the fuck home, all that sort of shit. We don't have that here. It's like think carefully, please stay alert. Um, if you don't mind, please sir, uh, please set to one side. Right? It's hilarious. England is set for sunshine for the first weekend since the lockdown. Um, oh yeah, they said it's gonna be really Prime good. Prime Minister weather. told the, the British public. This is the councillor Martin. What? Martin Terry, South End Beach Council, are looking. Public in England that they can go to destinations. So in a sense, we're we're trying to not. We don't want too many people coming, but people are going to come. So we imagine him trying to stop people coming into his house party, right? We don't want too many people to come, but you can come. So like, what? That double speak doesn't work in house parties. You have to be very clear about who who you allowed to come in and who isn't allowed to come in. If you if you give us a a fucking inch. 
We will steamroll your house, mate, and take all the food. We, we're suggesting that when they do come here, please listen to our, our hosts, try and be safe and well, do the physical distancing, and, and look after your families. We've got a number of... Imagine going, that's what I'm saying, really. My only problem with all this stuff, right, is why, do I, why would I want to go out with social distancing? It just doesn't make any sense. I'd rather stay indoors, for real, until things go back to normal. There's... Of course, going out just to maybe grab something to eat so you're not making your own food, you know, for the mi for the second millionth time again, fair enough. But to go out and party or hang out with friends with social distancing just doesn't seem that fun to me. If anything, it seems like, you know, the opposite of fun. Of volunteers and hosts from the council who are almost like the, similar to the welcome hosts at the Olympic Games to remind people to be safe. Imagine that. Imagine how dorky and cuck that is, man welcome host to tell you how to operate it's very dystopian in it imagine that people telling you where to stand where to walk who you can hug who you can stand next to like count me the fuck out of that thank you so much really sure. appreciate the social thank you, thank you. Oh. Thank you. so cuck so south end would normally expect to be flooded with visitors on such a weekend thank you guys nice and careful. i love us with british people innit? we're saying thank you for doing for someone doing something they should be doing anyway we're we're you know being that polite on the bikes enjoy your exercise thank you good afternoon guys good morning just uh, keep up your social distancing for us please <laughs> nice two meter gap enjoy your exercise <laughs> imagine kissing your, your, your wife at home on the forehead and telling her you're gonna do this 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 is what you're doing shouting at people and telling them to keep this is again bless the guy in it it's a job you have to work whatever keep the lights on but this is the most cuck thing in the world, man. I could never be seen doing this. I would never obey the laws anyway to begin because I'm a bad boy. But I would also wouldn't want to put myself in a position where I'd have to be standing there with it. Does he have a step proof vest on as well? Does he have a bulletproof vest on? I don't know if he's got a step proof vest on as well. I don't know why. Why? <laughs> oh, it's nice to meet you, Gat. Enjoy your exercise. Thank you very much. Your guys. And, and, and everyone going to the beaches as well in England is like, I don't know, you might as well go to a fucking skate park in Chernobyl, right? Really, like, what benefit are you really going to get going to a beach in England? Come on, really, let's be honest, man. It's full of shit, full of, I don't know, just pure shit. Everyone's there to go to the beach because of lockdown. So it's going to be overly populated, more so than it is usually. It's just a terrible place to be, right? It's no San Tropez, is it? It's no Miami Beach, is it? God damn it. Thank you. Like, look at that. That's terrible, isn't it? You must take your kid to the park. What is that? He's like digging in mud. <laughs> it's very exciting, especially that's why, because we haven't been here for half a year. So it's, it's lovely to be outside, to be able to see that. We haven't been indoors half a year, lady. Come on, relax. It's all it's like the exaggerations. And I love how it's like the running. And when I go running now, it's like I get a little bit resentful because most of the people out there are just, you know, just decided to run today, right? You can tell by the form and how they run and things. They're not necessarily runner runners. And it's annoying that I'm having to share space with people that just decided to run because, you know, they don't want to be indoors. They're taking up room. They're doing that thing where they run in a line and they start chatting to each other, wasting time, not hurrying up and picking up the pace, right? And then, you know, they're just outside. And then you get people like this who are like, you know, you live next to the beach. You've had this incredible resource right at your doorstep for ages and you haven't taken advantage of it. And now suddenly it's locked down. All of a sudden, you t everyone turns into fucking, you know, uh, mother nature right people want to be out there and touching trees and doing fucking yoga in the fucking park and playing hacky sack like get out of here usually you're sat in front of netflix you know munching on your seventh box of maltesers and now suddenly you want to be outside in the ocean yeah see and be outside on the fresh air that doesn't look fresh to me man would you that doesn't would you even eat a fish from that water if, it, if someone gave it to you that doesn't look fresh to me at all like the the floor, the sand thing, yeah, here, looks the same colour as the ocean. <laughs> like, it just all blends into each other. <laughs> I love England, man. We're, we're the best. We're really the best. But anyway, that'd be a good place to end the show. Once again, thanks so much for tuning in to the English Show. I think it's episode number 315. Um, as per usual, if you want more information regarding myself, check my website, link below, down there, AxionZinger.com, for more information regarding myself, DJ Mix's blog, all that good stuff can be there. Like I mentioned, I'm going to make a timetable of the stuff I'm going to do in the weekend for the Twitch live streams. If you want to see me DJ, I'll put a link later. 
but until then um if you're still watching your first time via youtube of course hit that like button smash like hit subscribe leave me a comment down below if you're what listening only via the podcast app of course leave me a five star review and share the show with your friends because that helps it to go a long way and spread it to everybody else out there you get me uh, but until then take care be safe and i'll see you guys again very very soon peace